Hello, hello, and welcome to the Cloud English Podcast. My name is Luke. It is December 17th, 2053, and it's almost Christmas. So we're going to be talking about that a bit today. Hopefully a lot of interesting things coming up. I'm planning to share some uh, Christmas traditions, sort of a cultural, a little bit of a cultural overview. And if those watching live have any questions, I'll be answering those. Uh, we'll be talking a, a little bit about pronunciation flow. So how can we improve the flow of pronunciation? We're going to be going into how you can work on your English if you don't have time to study. So how would you choose those activities that are going to help you improve your English without studying? We have some idioms to talk about. If we have time to get to an article, we'll do that. And a couple of videos that, that uh, some people have shared with me that uh, I want to share, which are interesting. Um, if you have stuff that you would like me to review on the podcast, then please do share them. I think the best place to do that is probably Discord. So speaking of that, if you haven't already, you can join the Discord for free. And, um, you know, there's the word of the day that's there. You can reach out to me directly on Discord or message me. Um, you can uh, get everything that goes out, whether that's a podcast episode or a video or whatever, of course, that will be sort of announced there. So it's sort of a hub. Um, again, English questions. And if you have things that you, you think would be interesting for others to see that you want me to share, um, like the stuff that I have planned today, then feel free to, uh, to share that. Let's see what else. If you would like to get a free course, you can do that in the links in the description. That is a one hour free course and it is free. Um, you can get the, uh, the full membership for 30% off. That is a running discount, 30% off on the annual membership on the website, access to all the courses. And of course me on WhatsApp. So if you're going through the courses, then message me anytime. If you have questions as you're going through the courses, literally one-on-one -on -one help. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily classes with me, but if you have any questions or you need help or whatever, uh, that's part of the deal. Uh, let's see, what else? Of course, if you want to support the show, then hit the like button and subscribe. Or if you're listening, and I do appreciate the audio listeners, then do the thing that is available the five stars on Apple podcast or on Spotify. I think something like that. I think you can review it there too. I don't know. I don't, I don't listen to things on Spotify. I used to use Spotify more and it just made more sense to me to, for me to switch to Apple music, even though I don't like Apple music. I don't like it, but I switched anyway. One thing that I did get recently sort of as a, my 10 year anniversary is coming up. Can you believe that? I have been married for 10 years. That's crazy to think about. Coming up very soon. And so as a sort of little anniversary gift, uh, we got uh, uh, some, some vinyl records and a vinyl record player. And it's cool. It gives, it gives li the, the music listening experience a bit more mm, t tangibility. You can touch it. You can feel it. You have to switch it. But if I'm being honest, sometimes I, I forgot how quickly it goes through one side. So the needle plays through one side and you have to flip it over. But it's maybe 15 minutes and that's the length of one side on a 33 record. And so you have to flip it over after about 15 minutes. I, you know, it's three or four songs or something like that. I know that's kind of the charm and the appeal of a record player playing records. I do. I get it. I get that. However, there's something to be said for <laughs> modern technology, just listening to music on Spotify or Apple or whatever you use 
or YouTube or whatever, you know, and there's some things I can't find. Like, you know, I listen, <laughs> if you looked at my music playlist, you would probably find it very uh, disturbing. <laughs> it's not like, uh, I do listen to some regular normal human music, but it's a lot of stuff like, uh, three hour ambient background music, uh, five hour, uh, 832 Hertz chanting, uh, ohm chanting background music, eight hours of brown noise, um, uh, nine hour fractal zoom, uh, this is a lot of like weird stuff like that. I don't often just sit there and listen to music or songs. And if I'm on a walk, I also don't do that. I, it's not like, it's not that music is a waste of time, but it is. <laughs> <laughs> so if it's if I have something on in the background while I'm working, I find brown noise, ambient music, maybe some maybe lo fi the study girl playlist on uh, everywhere. There's a playlist called Study Girl. I find that really actually helps me focus because right? I don't treat it as me listening to music, but I will pretty much never just sit there and listen to a song that I like rarely uh, maybe once a month um, so yeah that's my my music my music uh, habits are kind of weird I don't I'm not a big music person actually I like podcasts I like to listen to audiobooks I like to listen to long form videos you know uh, so for what for what it's worth that's what i like i don't know what about you what what do you listen to what do you what do you like do you listen do you listen to a lot of music do you listen to more podcast i'm more of a podcast guy i feel like it's a higher roi activity i don't know <sighs> anyway enough griping about that hello denny and rafael great to have you uh joining happy 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 not christmas christmas is when is christmas the 25th, of course, but when is the 25th? Today's the 17th, so that's in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 days, a week. Oh, so I should have done the Christmas stream for the next episode. Damn. Oops. Oh, well, maybe I'll do another Christmas one next next week. I'll see how, how far I can juice it. See how much I can juice Christmas. Christmas part 2 next week. Stay tuned. It's going to be great. Uh, so maybe we could talk a bit about that. Uh, as an adult, it seems like with every passing year, the ceremonial stuff, holidays, traditions, kind of fades in importance and I, I don't know if that's good normal bad scary if I think about the last five years I'm trying to remember one single Christmas to pick out one and think okay what did I do three years ago on Christmas hmm, let me think I actually have no idea <laughs> I can't remember what I did last year on Christmas. I can't remember what I did four years ago on Christmas. I have no idea. Now, if I think about Thanksgiving, I can kind of pick things out because that is the holiday where I will, I will actually uh, the holiday where I will actually get in a car and drive nine hours to go to Ohio and do Thanksgiving. And so part of it is the pain of driving nine hours. And part of it is it's a you know big family event, so it's more memorable. There's the food and stuff. But usually on Christmas, there's just nothing that special going on. And so I've been reflecting on this because when I think back to my childhood, 
it's the opposite. I remember almost every Christmas and each one is sort of glowing with memory, with nostalgia, with warmth, with joy, with excitement, with anticipation. Not just the gifts, but the whole thing. We had a special thing where you would get up or we would get up on Christmas Eve morning. That was our first Christmas, do our family Christmas. And just that anticipation of what am I going to get? I can't wait until my brother or my mom or my dad sees what I got them. Just that whole excitement of of uh, wrapping presents the night before, going downstairs and looking at how many presents are under the Christmas tree. Then in the morning, running downstairs, grabbing your stocking full of stocking stuffers, honestly, not that exciting. But then opening presents and watching your family members open their presents, then having a big breakfast, listening to Christmas music, having hot cocoa, then that evening driving to my father's parents house my grandparents on my father's side and having another christmas the excitement of what they would get us their only grandchildren what are we going to get from them usually you know the best juiciest gifts on that on that evening and another christmas meal and the fact that we didn't go there that often how kind of special that was watching christmas movies there like Charlie Brown, the Charlie Brown Christmas movie, and Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and Frosty the Snowman, all of that. And then the next day getting up and going to my other grandparents' house, not so much for the gifts, but more of the, uh, the family environment, having a big delicious meal, hanging out with family members, playing ping pong, you know, this th two or three days of pure excitement, nostalgia, and memory. And I don't think that's unusual for a lot of, a lot of uh, people who celebrate Christmas as a kid. But then growing up, the world makes you busy. You start just doing other stuff. You have a lot of responsibilities. You start getting interested in other things. And so maybe it's this natural process of and of losing a feeling for holidays. I can tell you right now, Christmas is coming up in a few days, one week. I feel nothing. I feel nothing. I feel zero. Now, I'm excited about other stuff, <laughs> right? I'm excited about, uh, I want to get those uh, Ray-Ban smart glasses. I want to buy those for myself and have them because they're cool. I want to try them out. Oh, yeah, I'm a little excited about that, <laughs> right? So there are things I'm excited about, but not Christmas. And that this feeling, I feel kind of this, uh, this uncomfortable feeling of being okay with it, but also knowing maybe that's somehow not right. But then something changed. I had a child. His name is Pi. And he's going to be growing up. He's a little baby now. So I can say this Christmas, he's not registering anything. Other than, now that he's a few months old, when, when you walk by the Christmas tree with him, he reaches out to the ornaments on the tree to try to grab them, right? So I can see now that parenthood is a way to get back into it, to reclaim the magic of the holidays, whatever holiday you may celebrate, without forcing yourself. Right? I can't force myself to care about Christmas again. However, because I remember how magic Christmas was to me as a child, I now want to provide that experience. I am now thinking, ooh, when he's one or two or three years old, he's going to have that same feeling of excitement, what can I do to make sure that it's just as exciting for him as it was for me? And that makes me excited again. And it's the same for, I think, Halloween. You know, Halloween, uh, can't wait to go out and dress up as some crazy thing and get candy. Oh my God, I can't wait. 
Oh, and it's my birthday. Wow, wow. <laughs> Halloween is my birthday. Um, that feeling of excitement. I don't have it anymore. Zero. But I can see a way as a parent to get excited about it now. Maybe I can provide that. Maybe we should make a costume this year. What do you think? Or what do you want to dress up as? Or where do you want to go to get the best candy? Now I'm starting to think about this stuff. I'm starting to get excited about the providing of experiences. And I'm realizing this may be, I, I, you, you kind of maybe know it, but now I'm realizing it as a parent. This is maybe a, the natural thing that happens in life. Um, when life starts to make you busy and you start to feel like you're losing that magic, having kids brings you back in. So I'm glad. <laughs> I'm happy about it. I'm looking forward to it, but I can say this Christmas, it's kind of an awkward middle point because we're not doing the Christmas thing. He, he's too, he's months old. He, he's too young to appreciate it. We're not going to put any presents under the tree. Uh, he's, just, he's just not going to get it. We have decorations, you know, he likes the ornaments. But next year, I think we'll start to get into it. And then the year after that and the year after that, it ramps up. You know, until he is maybe he's 10 and that's the ultimate excitement, right? Uh, okay, well, anyway, those are my thoughts about Christmas, the importance of ceremony and tradition, which I do think is important, but also the importance of finding a way to connect to those things. My hope is in the next few years, I will be able to say, I remember last year's Christmas. I remember Christmas two years ago. That was great. I love that. That's what I'm trying to get back in a natural way as a parent. But I would love to know if you have a similar experience to me. Is it just me? I'm a cynical old, old man right now. Am I the only one? How do you feel about it? I would really love to know. By the way, if you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. And also get a free course in the links in the description. Um, oh, we have more people joining. Hello, welcome, welcome from the Ukraine. Great. Are you on? Are you in Spotify? The podcast is on Spotify. Yeah, I don't, as I said, don't really use Spotify that often, but yeah, the podcast is on Spotify. You can just go to Spotify and search Cloud English. Loud English, and you will find it. You should find it. You better find it, but you can do the same on Apple Podcasts and Amazon and any, honestly, any of the others, anything, any and all. Mmm, coffee. Mmm, 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 coffee, coffee, mmm, mmm, mmm. All right. Okay. We're going to cover one very important pronunciation topic, something I've been wanting to talk about in a very simple and concise way, and we're going to get to it. Finally, now, finally, 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 finally. I hope everybody is having a good week and uh, staying safe and I don't know celebrating some sort of holiday actually I'm curious about this um, list of holidays celebrated in December around the world that's what I want because December is sort of a big one right December is a big one. Okay, so we've got, here we go. From sources across the web, Hanukkah. Indeed, the Jewish people celebrate Hanukkah on December 18th through 26th. Hanukkah is a December global holiday commemorating the story of the Maccabees. Okay, Kwanzaa. 
Each family celebrates Kwanzaa in its own way, but celebrations often include songs and dances, African drums, storytelling, poetry. Christmas. Chris, uh, Christians celebrate Christmas largely to commemorate the birth of Jesus, but the festival has also been adopted as a secular family holiday. Yeah. That's, I think, the really cool thing about Christmas is that, yes, you could say Christmas it has the word Christ in it, so is that just for Christians? Not at all. Not at all. In fact, the history of Christmas is, is pretty interesting. So, before Christmas, there was a holiday on the same day called Saturnalia, which is a Roman holiday. And so, Christmas has roots as a holiday way farther back than the, the Jesus story. And with other holidays, that story just kind of got layered on top right so santa has nothing santa claus has nothing to do with jesus really right uh is there anything specific about red and white and green and candy canes and uh stockings and presents under the tree and buying things for other people is there's a really much to do with that with the Jesus story, because Christmas as a Christian holiday is supposed to celebrate uh, Jesus' birth, right? Well, no, no. And in fact, you know, before that, uh, Mithras, uh, which is a holiday that's or, uh, in, in Mithraism, which was um, a religious tradition practiced by Roman soldiers in sort of the underground, um, comes from Persian culture, has roots in Persian culture, and it was sort of brought back by Roman soldiers and celebrated. So that has ties as well, in addition to Saturnalia. So there's a lot of stuff that, that ties back to that date. Same thing happens with Easter, by the way, in the springtime. That is a holiday celebrated by Christians as... Uh, as when Jesus uh, died and then came back to life on Easter Sunday. Well, uh, what's with the eggs then and the rabbits? It's a fertility holiday. It's celebrated for all kinds of reasons, right? So, anyway, uh, Yule. Yule? Yule is a winter holiday that celebrates the rebirth of the sun. Different people around the world celebrate yike, including pagans, Wiccans, and Druids. Oh, a Druid holiday. I actually don't, didn't know really about Yule before, but that's pretty cool. I, I feel like I could celebrate Yule. I feel like I could celebrate Yule. Further, Boxing Day. Americans don't really celebrate Boxing Day, but I know Brits do. Boxing Day is a day to celebrate the giving of gifts and is typically uh, and it typically takes place after Christmas Day. Many people use Boxing Day to return believe, return gifts. Originated in the United Kingdom and is celebrated the day after Christmas. Mm. I know you can't see that on the screen, but I'm just reading it. 11 holidays the world celebrates in December. Yeah, I think this list should be the same. St. Nicholas Day. What's the difference between Christmas and St. Nicholas Day? Also known as the Feast of St. Nicholas, Christians honor the birthday of St. Nicholas, which is supposed to be what Santa Claus is named after St. Nicholas. Christians honor the birthday of St. Nicholas, the inspiration behind Santa Claus, given his proclivity towards self-giving. So there's the Santa Claus thing, but then there's another theory about Santa Claus, the modern Santa Claus, and where that comes from. So there's a tradition in Siberia among shamans in Siberia where, so this is, I'm not sure how true this is, but it's it, very interesting. So Shamans, medicine men in Siberia, will look for Amanita muscaria, 
or the red, classic red and white mushrooms, which are poisonous, right? That are being eaten by reindeer. Reindeer. And the reindeer will eat the mushrooms and then the shamans will take their their pee and drink that and it's supposed to take out the toxic part and leave some compounds that allow them to then sort of see visions and one of the things that they see is elves little elves running around hmm interesting now those mushrooms are what color red and white where do they grow under pine trees. What color are pine trees? Green. What do pine trees look like? Christmas trees. Christmas trees are pine trees. So you have these shamans, crazy old bearded men. <laughs> well, not crazy, but you know, shamans, okay. And they are seeing little, <laughs> little elves. Uh, uh, there's a connection to reindeer and pine trees. And the colors red and white. All of the elements are there, right? That which is very interesting. It's all there. And the Santa Claus story, Santa Claus wears red and white. He's got a big beard. He brings gifts to children around the world. He is uh, at the North Pole. Elves make all the toys that he brings around the world. Um, and then puts them underneath the Christmas tree. And who carries, who pulls his magic sleigh through the sky? Reindeer. So, St. Nicholas, maybe. Or, shaman getting buzzed on fly agaric mushrooms? Eh, maybe, 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 maybe. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Maybe I'm the only one who thinks that's interesting. But I think that's pretty interesting. Coincidence? Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. Immaculate Conception Day. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> All right, enough about this. Why is Hanukkah so down the list? Why is, okay. Boxing Day, Kwanzaa. Okay, anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um... Let's get to our next thing, shall we? We're going to talk about fluency a little bit. I'm going to hop over to the blackboard. I'm going to hop over to the blackboard over here. And we're going to spend a little bit of time on fluency. I'll explain what I mean by that, by the way. Okay. So, one of the reasons that native English sounds native is that it flows. It's fluent. It sounds natural. And it has nothing to do with speed. So I'd like to get this idea out of your head. Uh, natural pronunciation, fluent speech must be fast. If I want my English to be better, it should be faster. Wrong. 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 Uh, do I sound natural right now when I'm speaking? If the answer is yes, then that's wrong. So, what is it? What is it? Well, there, you know, there are a number of different things. And if you want a lot of depth on this, definitely check out my full courses where, where I really talk about this stuff in, in depth. But one very important piece is the way that sentences are pronounced as a whole. So when you look at 
a sentence and you want to say it, or when you're thinking of a sentence and you want to say that, you shouldn't think of it on a word by word basis, word by word. And you definitely shouldn't say it that way. If you listen carefully to what I'm saying now, I wonder if you notice anything interesting about how I'm saying what I'm saying. So notice how slow that was. It still sounded very natural. What I'm doing is connecting sounds together. And the sounds I'm connecting together are voiced, voiced sounds. That means I'm using my voice. And I will jump between words if there's no unvoiced sound to break them up, basically. So unvoiced would be like shh. No, not ba. I meant to be make a P sound, not a ba sound. Not ba. Ba is voiced. So this is not something you have to do, but it's something that you can start to work on to make your speech sound more fluid, more natural, more organic, more native, more native, right? So let's just take a quick example, and then we're going to look at some whole sentences and practice those a bit. Let's say, let's, let's look at two words together, right? Native English. Okay, now, this could be pronounced as native, but because the T is in the middle of the word, followed, followed by a vowel sound, this will often be pronounced as a D. Now, we look at the last sound in this word and we see that it's V. Yes, there's an E there, but it's actually V, right? And we look at the first sound in this word and it's E, right? Which is voiced. So, voiced and voiced. And is there anything unvoiced going on here? Well, if we pronounce this as t, then it's unvoiced, but we're gonna pronounce it as d, d, it's a light d sound. And this is unvoiced, sh, right? Unvoiced. Okay, so the sniff, that's unvoiced. <laughs> uh, sorry about that. Okay, so how do we say this? Well, a native English speaker would say native English. Now, let's slow that down. Native English. Native English. So that native, native, native allows you to keep your voice flowing and, 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 and that's your voice there's no stop now we change that to a d you can't always change t's to d's to be clear but in this case you can native native english and it almost sounds like vinglish right instead of native english it's native ving ving vinglish so a couple things are happen, happening here. We got the D sound instead of the T. And then what we're doing is we're kind of in the way that we say it, in the flow, we're making these two, we're kind of changing the way that we say these two. Native, native stops and English, English starts hard, right? But instead what we're doing here is kind of combining these into one syllable, pushing the second syllable of this word actually uh, or the end of this syllable into the beginning of the next word. So actually, this part is nade, nade is now the two syllables, ne, like ne, and I'll make, make that how it is, ne, and then de, nade. And then the next syllable is actually ving. So that's v like ving, ving, 
ving, ving, ving, ving, glish. And then the glish goes into the next, goes into the next syllable. Maybe that should be split right there. Anyway, you get the idea, right? So I'm pushing the last sound of the first word into the next word, the first syllable of the next word. And I'm continuing my voice. So the other thing that's happening here is that the voice does not stop. Native ving, 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 vinglish. Okay. So that's different than saying native English. Native English, which sounds very robotic and choppy. We don't like that. Native English, native English, native English, native English, native English. Notice how light that D is, by the way. Okay. So we get the idea. Now, we want to try to put it into practice. So let's actually write down a few words. I mean sentences. When I say words, I mean words that make sentences. My brain, what's wrong with it? Okay, so let's try this. Let's do what are you planning planning to do now that you don't have a job, okay? So there's our sentence. Now, some of these things we can change. So for this one, because we have the T and it's followed by this vowel sound, we can generally change that to a D sound. We're gonna put those together. So it's gonna be wa and then dar, but it's gonna be lighter than that, what are, okay? Now, for this one, we can't do that. Two, will be pronounced sort of like this, ta, ta, like that. So we have to break. We're gonna continue the voice throughout this, this whole thing, we're gonna continue the voice, and then we'll stop the voice right there with ta, and then continue with, t it's gonna sound like this, ta do, ta do, ta do, ta do, do now, and the voice will continue here, now, and then this is voiced that, right? So we'll continue the voice through that. But here we cannot do the D sound. This, instead of saying that, we'll use what we call a stop T, or what I call a stop T. So the voice will stop there, but it won't sound like that. It'll sound like this, that, that. So the voice will stop there, okay? And then we'll continue here. You don't. And again, stop. Now that you don't, so there, there'll be two stops there, right? Stop, stop, because of the T, the voice will stop. And then have a job will continue the voice, okay? So there's a lot going on even in this very short sentence. So we're using the D there to replace the T. We are rolling the voice through all of these. The voice is gonna stop because of the T at the beginning and the T at the end. Notice that T's often cause stops. When we can't change a T to a D, it will stop the voice either because it's at the beginning of the word or because it's at the end of a word and it is the stop T sound, which is at, don't, that, don't, on, 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 on. it's that stop sound, right? Okay, here we go. You wanna try with me? How about this? Listen to me say it once, then I'll just leave a space for you. And I want you to say it out loud, okay? Try it. Try it yourself. I'm going to read the whole sentence, and then you just say it. I'll give you a space, and then I'll, I'll do it more quickly. All right, here we go. Just listen first. Don't try to say it at the same time as me. Listen. It's a weird no throat noise. Hold on. Sipped. I need a sip. Better. Listen first, then try here we go. What are you planning to do now that you don't 
have a job. What are you planning to do now that you don't have a job? What are you planning to do now that you don't have a job? What are you planning to do now that you don't have a job? <laughs> too fast for me. <laughs> what are you planning to do now that you don't have a job? Okay, maybe that one's too hard, right? But I hope now you, you're getting the idea. There's a lot here. This is something that I cover in a lot more detail with a lot more practice in my pronunciation courses. Uh, all different levels of pronunciation courses. I think I have four pronunciation courses at this point. One is Advanced American English Pronunciation. Definitely worth checking out. So, you know, practice this, but I just hope I can make you accept this, that it's not about speed, it's about flow. It's about these things and other things, but these are two key pieces. What are these key pieces? That we're replacing letters, especially T with D, that we are continuing the voice, and actually a third thing, that we're often using the last sound of the previous word as the first sound of the next word instead, right? Like native English, 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 that's not a word, but it does sound like that. That helps us link those two words together in a natural way. And I do want to just say, you know, there's no rule that says you have to do this. Pause. You have to pause sometimes. Sometimes you need to breathe, <laughs> right? So if someone said, for example, what are you planning to do now that you don't have a job? There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to do it. I'm just saying this is one of the key pieces that allows natural, fluent sounding English to sound that way, okay? Practice this. I will give you one sentence for the road, meaning for you to practice on your own. If you have any questions, let me know. Here's the sentence that you can practice by yourself. Colorado is one of the top destinations for snowboarders. Colorado is one of the top destinations for snowboarders. That sounds bad. Don't do that. Try it yourself. Here we have uh, t stop there, right? Destinations. St, st, st. No, the voice will stop there. Asians. This one is not a t sound, but it's part of the sh sounds. So sh will be unvoiced, right? Um, and then otherwise uh, should be yeah, should be voiced. Yeah, should be voiced. Okay, so try that out. Let me know how it goes. Again, if you have any questions, let me know. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit the like button. And also, please subscribe and get a free English course in the links in the description. Good, right? Very good. Very good, 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 very good. Okay, I'm going to erase this. Try that out for yourself. Try it out. Practice. The only the only way to get better is to practice. That's obvious. That's obvious. Of course. Doi. Of course. Um. All right. Take a quick coffee break here. Jeez. Uh, 
what else have we got? What else have we got? Um, sorry about the sniffles. I've got sniffles today. And I apologize for it. Not good. I don't like it. I got a, I got a, I got a sniffly, sniffly nose. I don't think I have a cold. I'm not coughing or anything. I just... My nose is not as clear as it should be. And I'm upset about it. And I don't like it. It's bad. All right. Um, let's see. We can get to, I think... Um, hold on. Let me quickly just check this uh, stream on YouTube. Let me check the stream on YouTube. I just want to check to see if it's working okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Just wanted to check the stream quickly to make sure it's streaming correctly. So what I want to do is people I got a, I got this someone shared this to me and I thought it was interesting. So I want to I'm curious if you will find this interesting. This, somebody shared on Instagram, someone messaged me this directly, what English sounds like to foreigners, to non-English speakers. And this is pretty amazing. I think it's pretty accurate. Listen to this. Here we go. Ready? Oh, turn the audio on. Here we go. Please up to uh, Pakistan, Pakistan. Today we have to the border in Afghanistan. We near have to the Afghani OCC border area. We have to the rocket launcher firing after in the people 35 want to the Balkan. Bruce English, ki khabar na khola goga. Police up uh, Pakistan Patan. Today we have to the border in Afghanistan. We near have to the Afghani OCC border area. We have to the rocket launcher firing after in the people 35 want to the bulk. He's not, he's not speaking English at all, but it sounds like English. And there are a couple of English words in there. I heard it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, I think he's getting the sounds from news, right? So today we have, and then I heard rocket launcher. Let's see. Bruce English, ki khabruna khola goga. Police up, Pakistan, Pakistan. Today we have to the border in Afghanistan. We near have to the Afghani OCC border area. We have to the rocket launcher firing after in the people thirty-five want to the Balkan. So he's got some words in there, but that's not the thing that makes it sound like English. I think. What it is? What is the what is the basic American, uh, um, specifically American English? So you can hear, even though this guy's not speaking English, you can hear that he's speaking American English, or he sounds like he's speaking American English. Uh, comment says he's he said nothing with his words, but his accent is trying to sell me a Ford F one fifty, yeah, a big pickup truck. He said everything and nothing. So what is it? What is that sound? What 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 it what is the Americanness about it? Bruce English ki khabruna khola goga. Ali Pakistan Pakistan Today we have to the border in Afghanistan. Today we have 
today today we have what's wrong with here ham too right near right i think a big part of it is the r sound so americans tend to use n's and r's for the n sounds there's a lot of stuff going through the nose so that's very nasally and n not all languages are as nasally as english but then also you have a lot of r's so even for example british english it's more more like uh for there's it's open right the tongue is more flat but americans really curl the tongue up and back and when they curl the tongue up and back you get this r r r r r r r r ear 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 what i'm hearing a lot there what makes it sound more american to me here is often i think the r's are the are emphasize or stress so i think that's actually a big part of it the r's and the ear sounds a big part of what he's saying here the afghani occ motoravia we have to their work motoravia Maybe also D, the, that light D, but 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 I mean, that's there in British English too, but but yeah. Rocket launcher firing after in a... Rocket launcher. He's, he's actually, his. If he actually knew English, I think he would sound very natural. He's got a, a great pronunciation. People 35 want to the Boston. Through the English, he's going to go to the Pakistan Patan. Today we have to... Patan Patan. Okay, the other part is Pakistan Patan Patan. Maybe there's a laid back. It's kind of laid back. It's not too. Um... The Vonnery in Afghanistan, we near Hampton. The Afghani OCC bought around me out. OCC bought around me. But, but it, yeah, the light D sound bought around me. And also, I think it's just the uh, that flowing sound where the voice continues and doesn't get stopped. It goes There's something about native pronunciation that sounds like that too. So this is I mean this is this is pretty cool. There's also, there's another video. There's another um video. I don't know if I can find it, but let me yeah, let me actually see if I can where people specifically made a video to sound American. Uh, let's see what Americans sound like to foreigners. Let's see if I can find this one. It was a skit, I think. He sounds like to none. Yeah, this is the one. This is the one. Hold on, there's an ad playing. All right, so this this is what this is what Americans or what with the title of this is how English sounds to non-native English speakers, non-English speakers. I'll skip. Sounds good. Bring that Mori album, John. Did you flap by the love call? Yeah, I come by the next one. You flap blah 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 call? I played that private by the wrong front line today. Oh, the raising man with Nash Marie. Tough for me. Americans have this me 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 me. Americans have this special thing, I think, where there's a lot of stuff going through the nose. I feel like it's quite nasally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, very up high. Not doubt, doubted the mouth. If you don't use your nose, it doesn't sound very American. But what? When he's starting to put it, I'm here. And it sounds more American. How many? There's something, something about that. Greet that Trajan. No, her station is trapped. I mean, why the crest soldier mm -hmm. for the Magali mm -hmm. nation is further grad to my Chosen. Chosen for the Magalon? Magalon, my shit. <laughs> <laughs> and shit. There's, yeah, and a lack of formality, the nasaliness, the R sounds, it's all there. Similar. Vano porn this round for mom's predation sake. Speaking for that. Shit, I have a car. Uh, what way? 
Learner's Day, you prone along for that. Learner's Day, you prone along for that. Learner's Day, you prone along for that. I feel like there's something to learn from this. I don't know what it is, but there's something to learn from this. There's something about that that's essentially native sounding, even though there's no meaning at all. Anyway. All right. Um, I want to get to yeah a couple other things. So let's let's talk about. Um, We can maybe get to another video, another video later. But I have a couple of other things I want to talk about. Okay. Oops. Let me zoom in a little bit. So, what if you hate studying? You don't like to study. Well, I think that's okay. But does that mean you can't make any progress? You can't really improve your English? No, it doesn't mean that. If it meant that, then I wouldn't be talking about, <laughs> talking about this. So, yes, studying helps. Learning vocabulary helps. Studying grammar helps. It's all very important. You know, doing exercises and working on it, it's all good. You should. But even if you don't, you can make progress if you find ways to turn your brain into an English brain. I have a whole course called Building Your English Brain. You have to build your English brain. And I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about how to do that, but I am going to just give you some, you know, basic ideas about how you can start thinking about it, how you can start switching into English mode. Think of your brain as a setting, like a phone with settings. Can you toggle on English mode instead of just watching a movie once a week or something, can you completely switch over? Yes. Yes. There are, there are ways to do it. So let's talk about that. The first would be to watch English movies, TV shows, YouTube videos, everything that you consume, everything that you get, you receive. It doesn't mean you have to do it all the time, but dedicate time. Maybe every Thursday, Friday, Saturday are English days. Everything you watch is in English. Every podcast you listen to is in English. Every TV show is in English, right? Every YouTube video you, you find is in English. You're going to naturally pick up phrases, learn phrases. You're going to start to get a feeling for pronunciation. Your listening is going to improve. Now, it might be more gradual than if you were to practice it daily and really focus on it and study, but you're still going to make progress. Pro progress? Progress. You can also try to start thinking in English, talking to yourself. I do this. When I'm listening to an audiobook, one of the things that I do to improve retention is I will ask myself questions throughout I will say, is he saying that, I think what he's talking about is, um, my understanding of this point is, right, this is called mental dialoguing. Basically, if you hear a new phrase in a movie, try to think about that phrase in English. Ah, and in your head say, this phrase is usually used when someone is stressed and is trying to express their frustration. Maybe I could say, and then come up with a little example. Just think that thought as you're watching this movie and you hear a new phrase, and that's going to help it stick. And if it comes up again later or you hear it in a different place, it's going to be more likely that you will remember it. So you're not studying there. You're not sitting down to practice, sitting down to study, but you are engaging. 
And that's the difference between just sitting there and watching and actually turning your brain on, letting what you see and what you hear make something happen in your head, right? To dialogue is actually a really powerful thing. Now, listening to music is not, not bad. Just getting your mind into the headspace of listening to music. It's really tough to hear uh, specific words, but it can be good if you really like listening to music to kind of learn the lyrics and practice that. It can be a good way to work on specific uh, muscle memory things. It's kind of like tongue twisters. So it can be useful, especially for listening and pronunciation skills to sing along to music and improve your listening skills to be able to catch those catch those lyrics in in songs. Now, I think video games are actually a great way to improve your English because it is applied. That means that you're often using something that is learned. So one game that I have recommended people uh, people play is um, well something like Skyrim. You're going to have a lot of dialogue and the characters are talking. You may have subtitles. You have to then take what they say to you and do something with that information. Fallout. There's a lot of reading in Fallout. So there are games where you have to actually understand what is being said by NPC characters in order to accomplish a mission or in order to complete a quest or whatever. So you have to use the language. Because you're using it, it's like having immersion. It's like living in a native English speaking country. One of the reasons that people improve their language skills when they live in a native English speaking country is that they're not just passively hearing things and learning things. You have to learn this word so that you can then use it to buy vegetables, right? And so the, you get the same thing with video games. It has to be the right type of video game, you know, Playing a little puzzle game that has no language isn't going to do anything. But playing a more in-depth game that has a lot of language that requires you to do things with the language is great. And sometimes uh, playing a game with maybe a, a shooter game where you team up with, with random people uh, or maybe um, I don't know, an MM MMORPG or something like that. Online gameplay where you're teaming up with random people to communicate to get stuff done is another way to practice. And you can you, know, you can make potentially make friends doing that as well. This is a simple thing, but switch your phone to English. Why not? I again, it's reminding your brain, oh yeah, English, English, oh yeah, English. It's, it's like having a mode. And if you change everything in your life to English, again, you're going to start getting into that place where you start thinking about things in English you start having original thoughts in English, but it's important to create the right context, the right environment for yourself. Of course, you should read in English. This is great because you can choose things that you're interested in, whether that's a novel or nonfiction or articles online, whatever it is. Hopefully you enjoy the topic. Hopefully you like reading this because you want to know more about it or you're interested in, in the subject or you want to find out what's going on in the news, whatever it is. So you're using the language as a tool to get something. Enjoyment, entertainment, news, for example, rather than learning the language for the language itself. So this is not studying, right? This is forcing yourself to get the information that you want using a different path. Normally you get that same information through the path of your language. Well, why not change paths and try to get that same information through English? It's just one more thing that you can do that again, isn't studying, that is gonna make, force you to kind of immerse yourself. This is kind of a crazy one, but can be something called what we could call a, a, a bit of a forcing function. If you just try to apply for jobs, you might start getting interviews and that's going to put you in some pressure, right? So you have to prepare for those interviews. You have to answer those questions that they ask you clearly. You have to complete uh, the application process. You have to have a cover letter. You have to you know, write a good cover letter. You have to have a resume. 
You have to be able to answer questions on the spot. So even if you don't get it, that process of putting yourself through job interviews and even applying for jobs is very, very powerful because it's going to put pressure on you. And it's the good kind of pressure. It's the kind of pressure that you want. It's also important to know people, right? You don't want to feel alone. I'm just working on English all the time by myself. Alone is so isolating. Okay, well, there are communities out there, right? Uh, you can practice speaking English with others in a book club. You can join a Reddit community just to don't even have to participate, just to see what's going on, right? Or you can add comments to things. Find communities. There are English learning communities out there. Um, there are platforms that allow you to find you know, groups to talk about things. There's a lot of stuff out there. You have to do the work to find those. But if you find those communities, then you're going to have a big advantage because you're going to have others around you doing the same thing, which can motivate you, right? To can push you. And also, again, I keep saying this, but give you that, that environment, right? What about pushing yourself to do something? This gets a little close to uh, studying or trying to stay away from studying specifically, but I actually know someone who, who started doing this on my suggestion and has been getting a lot of benefit out of it. So he calls his friend regularly. They do a video call and they record it and they actually put it up online. Now, just recording it, that would be good enough just to be under pressure of having a conversation recording it. And these are both, you know, two non-native English speakers. But this sort of thing is just a way to say, again, putting myself into English mode. We're just going to practice. I may not be perfect. I may make mistakes. Fine. But it's better to just get used to speaking and communicate with someone than to do nothing. Right. And so do you have a friend, someone you know, who's also working on their English? Have a conversation once a week. You know, if you can find a native English speaker to do this with better, but that's going to be a big challenge. So if you have someone you know, get on a call with them once or twice a week and talk. Better yet, record it. Put, your, put yourself under some pressure. Watch the recordings back. Look at yourself. It's uncomfortable, but see, what can I do to be better next time? How can I communicate clearly? What things am I doing that could be maybe I'm more concise? Uh, how can I change my pronunciation? You'll, note, you'll start to notice things and you'll start to give yourself feedback. Get even crazier. Post those as like your own little podcast on YouTube or somewhere. And that's going to then give you some more pressure to, oh, I don't want to look silly in front of people, so I'd better improve even more. That's another thing to force you to work on specific skills, seek feedback, and improve your overall English skills. And so far, we're not sitting down studying anything. We're just doing things. And these things that we're doing are forcing us to switch into English mode, build our English brain, improve, learn, right? Develop new skills and confidence all without sitting down and studying anything. Another way that you could put English into practice would be, hey, here's a recipe in English. It's all in English. I don't understand any of these things. Okay, well, you know, I have to kind of look them up as I'm trying to do something. So there's a common theme here. We're trying to use language immediately. We're not saying, oh, let me learn 10,000 words, and then I'll start doing stuff with the language. We're flipping it around. It's the opposite. You should start doing things with the language first and forcing yourself to do those things with the language gives you so many new things to learn. Oh crap, I don't know this word. I better look it up so that I can do this thing. I'm trying to play this video game. I don't understand what they're saying. And so I have to I f turn on the subtitles. Now I can read it and understand. I need to improve my listening. Well, play, next time I play the game, I'm listening very carefully. Maybe I slowly start to improve. All we're doing here, one of the big things that we're doing is we're trying to use the language right away. Right away. We're trying to jump into the swimming pool at first rather than trying to get ready first. 
It's a huge mistake to try to get ready first and then do stuff. Better, do stuff, fail, improve a little. Do stuff, fail, improve a little. Do stuff, get a little better, get a little better, get a little better. And if it feels scary or uncomfortable, that's you. That's your fault. You, know, you have to push past that. Really, you have to push past that. I recommended this before, but write a diary. You're forcing yourself to use the language. Writing a diary or keeping a journal is very useful in general as a way to sort of keep track of how you are doing and what you've been thinking about. Keep uh, Hold yourself accountable for things, right? But doing that also forces you to, again, use the language. So I I would urge you, if you are the type of person who hates studying, 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 but you want to improve your English, switch your brain into English mode. Build your English brain by immersing yourself in the language, using it on a daily basis. Use it constantly. Use it to do things that you need to do and that you want to do. And all of these things are going to kind of work together to put you in this new headspace, we can call it. A new headspace where the English language is not a thing I have to study, but is a thing that I use to get things done and is part of my environment that I just kind of start to learn slowly, gradually. And eventually, you will start to notice big changes. You'll start to notice you're improving in a lot of areas without studying, okay? This is just a starting point. There's a lot to this. I just wanted to give you some, some ideas for how you could switch into English mode. I would challenge you to do this for a week. So try this for a week and let me know how it goes. And seriously, I want to know. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, also let me know. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to hit the like button and of course subscribe and also get a free course in the links in the description. Good. Switch into English mode. It's amazing how few people do that, actually. Amazing. It blows my mind how few people actually do that. It blows my mind. It blows my mind. But the ones who do, they see big changes. They see big improvements. It really boosts their confidence. It uh, can be a game changer. Okay. Do we have time for one more thing? Maybe. Maybe. Another thing that somebody sent me was uh, what English sounds like. English being taught in North Korea. Let's check this out. Let's check this out. All right. So what is an English lesson like in North Korea? Is it good? How do they learn? Is it the right way to learn? How does their English sound? Let's try. English is very interesting. Yes, I think so. So actually, I have to say, from a pronunciation standpoint, that's not too bad. I think the way that they're teaching is to teach them to repeat. Now, is this a good way to learn English, to repeat after someone? It depends on what you're trying to focus on. So let's say 
you just want to improve your pronunciation. Well, there's a method that's called shadowing, which allows you to kind of improve your listening and pronunciation at the same time. You hear the sounds that are being said, and then you try to say it yourself. So that's kind of what's happening here. And you could, you could improve especially your pronunciation this way and learn how to say the, the sounds that make up the English language. But is it a good way to actually learn how to use English? It depends on how much you're doing. If they were only doing this sentence again and again, do you speak English? Yes, a, yes, but a little, right? If they're, uh, you'd have to test more. Are they actually learning what those things mean? And if I were to say, okay, now make a different sentence using but to see if you actually understand. My view is for teaching kids, it's not the best way to learn how to use those things. Neither is just using multiple choice and doing, doing grammar, but you would want to have quite a few different sentences that use but, for example, and then by practicing those sentences, learning those sentences, sure, maybe standing up in front of the class and saying them out loud, but then creating your own sentences, you would start to understand more what does but actually mean and how does it work in a sentence, right? So again, yeah, repetition is good, but got to take it to the next step if you want to start really understanding how these things work in sentences. Yes, yes I do. So, so I mean, there are, the, the pieces are all there, but, okay, so that's showing you how to do a, do a negation, right? Um, that's, uh, that, that's useful, right? That's a conjunction. And then also interesting, yes, that's showing you how to maybe use uh, an adjective in a sentence. So it's the right pieces for sure. This kid is very eager. He wants to go next. He really wants to go. I think so. Uh, number 14 and 14. Yes. Yes, I do. I will make a small note. I mean, I'm not trying to criticize these kids. There's, they're, they're just learning English. Spiku, they're adding a oo sound at the end. Spiku English, they're adding the sound syllable in the middle. English, interesting. Yes, I think so. Yes, I do. But really, English is very interesting. Now they're doing shadow. I like the headphone tech. I wish that all teachers would have the headset thing. I wish I had that when I was in school. Everyone's got it piped in. That's pretty cool. Do you speak English? Do you speak English? Yes, I do, but a little. Yes, I do, but a little. English is very interesting. English is very interesting. Yes, I think so. Yes, I think so. Do you speak English? Again, I think it's not the worst. It's not. It's not terrible. I mean, the North Koreans teaching English, maybe they've got it figured out. To me, my quite my next question would be, well, let me see the next lesson. Are are they using this to learn a bunch? And is there an aspect of them needing to write down their own sentences using their own brains? Right. If there's that combined with this, I think it could be a way to learn and speak English. And also, what is going on here? Okay, you have this sort of class happening. All of these students students are very obedient, and then there's some there's some non Korean looking people in the background. What is happening here? What is going on in North Korean English classes? Is this are these two are they tourists? What is this? Okay, so they're, they're saying the same thing over and over. <sighs> I think if you're going to teach your kids, you want to get them excited about learning. And to get them excited about learning, if you only make them repeat things, it's not going to work very well. 
So you'd want to include other challenges. Can you try to ask me three questions? And then I'll answer them. Now I'll ask you three questions and you answer them. And then they try to do that. I, I think the try-fail approach generally works better. You try something that you've never done before. You make an effort. It's not perfect. Then you get feedback about how you did. And then you try again. So that's a good, a good flow, right? And then maybe you practice pronunciation by repeating after someone. But maybe also you try something by yourself and you get feedback on that. How do little kids, babies learn languages? Well, yeah, they, they listen to their environment and they start using it. And the feedback they get is if they're understood, then they can get something done like candy, 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 and they get a piece of candy. Well, then they, they're they using that word effectively because they didn't say they didn't say something else, right? They said the right word. And so you have to have an aspect of re reward there or feedback so that you know if you did it correctly. And you have to have that element of using your own brain to put things into practice. And even for pronunciation, I think that's true because for pronunciation, you have to... I don't know, you have to get your meaning across, right? You have to know what you're saying to communicate well. Even if, right, if you just repeat something that you learned again and again, and you don't know what you're saying, then there's no flexibility there, right? But it's it's very interesting to see this style of learning. It seems like a kind of traditional, traditional style of learning. I think th this was more how, um, you know, in, in, China, they used to learn this way back in the 1980s. Not so much anymore, but it reminds me, kind of reminds me of, of that. Yeah. All right. All right. I think we maybe will call it a day today. But thank you all so much for joining. I'm going to take my headphones off. Um, for those who are celebrating December holidays, happy holidays to you. If you're celebrating Christmas, then Merry Christmas soon. If you're celebrating Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or whatever, happy that, happy whatever. Hope you have a, hope you're having a good uh, good December. Uh, if again, just a reminder, if there's stuff that you want me to watch, like, like this video or, um, the other, feel free to share that with me directly. Um, some people send it to me directly on Instagram because they follow me on Instagram, but you can do that on the discord too. The discord is free to join. If you haven't already checked that out, make sure to do that again, feel free to hit the uh, like button and subscribe if you enjoy the um, enjoy the the podcast uh, or share it if you like that works too. Uh, free course in the links in the description and also very important. Um, what's very important? What was I going to say? Oh yeah, thirty percent off the yearly membership. It's thirty percent off as a rolling discount, but you can pay monthly. So monthly membership, but you're getting the yearly membership price, if that makes sense. You have to pay monthly, but you're getting the lower price. It's a good deal. It's a good deal, 30% off. So check that out as well. Hope you have a good one. Take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.